Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and this video is going to be kind of interesting in that I'm going to cover two um, topics, two things that a lot of people find it hard to get their mind around when they start hearing people like myself and other people online, people like I Am Legion, people like this. A lot of people have a real hard time getting their mind around the idea that what we're talking about with Ripple and XRP is truly as large and as big of a thing as we say. And when I say that, I mean that the IMF could be involved, that central banks could be involved. But there's one other thing. I don't think that even the most seasoned XRP community member really understands about what this is really all about. And this is going to sound pretty profound, but, I've, but I believe that XRP is partially for, and what Ripple's working on is partially, and maybe the bigger, bigger, bigger picture is that this is all for the, to prevent World War III. And I'm going to show you, I'm not just going to make a comment like that without backing it up with something. I'm going to kind of show you what I'm talking about and what I mean by that. First, I wanted to give some credit here, uh, and a lot. I'm going to cover one of I Am Legion's coil blog posts, but I wanted to let you all know that he is really uploading a bunch of his uh, research and information. He's doing it, uploading them in parts. He did Accenture, NTT Data, Everest, SIA, um, SBI Holdings, R3, and then he did Swift, Mastercard, Finestra. Bottom Line, Broadbridge, uh, Leon Leon, Standard Chartered, MoneyGram, Visa, PayPal, BNY, Mellon, Zelle, and ACI. I talked about that one the other day. And now I'm going to talk about the one he did today, which is Part 15, Central Banks, Fed, IMF, the World Bank, and more. And this one's for those of you who, who believe that all oh, that's just, no, that, those are just connections that just can't be, you know, come on. And I know there's a lot of people out there. Well, you know, it, it, it's it's um it's kind of like um the way this works for and the way it worked for me as well. I did not believe all of this stuff when I first started doing this. I was telling uh, Mr. B, I was on the phone with Mr. B this morning, and I was like, when I started this, I just thought, hey, this is a new asset class, and if I'm right, I, this would be a great investment. And and when this new asset class comes along, before long, we'd have XRP in, in traditional in our traditional accounts. And when that happens, the average Joe population would come in and we'll make a lot of money. That was my thought. But that's not where this all led me. And I, and I was telling Mr. B this morning, this le has led me to a place I never dreamed this would lead. And that is all the way to the top, the heights of power. And that I believe that this was all designed and has been designed to prevent World War III. I truly believe that, and I'll show you why at the end of this video. Um, it's called the Archives. He's, uh, so let's go through what I Am Legion has here. Um, the thing he starts with, and you ought to ask yourself this question, who hosts, what company have you ever heard of in your entire life that hosts a world, a central bank uh, summit? Well, Ripple has, November 13th, 2017, and this is the article. Here's the actual article that Ripple had put out on this. Uh, Ripple recently gathered over two dozen central banks from around the world to explore how new technologies enable the next generation of payments. Central Bank Summit on Blockchain hosted at Carnegie Hall in New York City. What company have you ever heard of in your entire life that hosts one central bank anywhere? Why would a, who, you've got to ask yourself this question, who has gotten the, who helped Ripple get the attention of, of how many central banks did they say? Over two dozen, over two dozen central bankers from the, around the world. Now, they didn't just get the attention of them. They were able to get them to fly to New York City to be in one room with Ripple of all people. That doesn't happen, folks. 
It doesn't happen. But it does for Ripple. All right, so, and then it's got different things uh, that were said here. Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse hosted the event and said the summit provided an opportunity to explore the full payments landscape, central banks, domestic trials, Ripple's growing cross-border network, and interoperability across systems. Together, these form the beginning of an Internet of value where payments move as easily as data across the Internet. Um, the summit uh, started with a presentation from, so the IMF is doing a presentation at the summit, okay? All right. Um, so as we go along, so the, in other words, the IMF is trying to sell Ripple to the central banks. And that's what's been going on from the beginning, including Christine Lagarde. That's why we've seen Christine Lagarde mention Ripple all these times. Um, and then as you go along, you'll, it says, talks about how Bank of England's connected to Ripple, 100 financial institutions. This was back then. The Gates Foundation, um, digital assets, the future of liquidity is here. Now let's go to the next thing that he's got in his thing here. Um, several global banks join Ripple's growing network. That's from September 15th, 2016. And look at these banks. Standard Chartered, Nat National Australia Bank, Mitsu Financial Group, BMO Financial Group, Siam Commercial Bank, Shanghai, Quarry. Um, and then as we go down here, he makes a comment. He says, SIA equals Bank of Italy plus more. And then he's got the history. This is um, this is a pool of Italian banks at Societa Interbancaire. Don't let me try to speak Spanish. That just wouldn't work, would it? So SIA is basically the Bank of Italy combined with all these different banks. Now he's got a clip from this guy, and I pulled the YouTube video, um, and he, he said to play this clip from 355. This guy is Niccolo Romani, head of innovation for SIA. Um, talking uh, quite a lot with uh, other big players, in particular Hyperledger Fabric and Ripple, and we are investigating how to help the banks and the corporate to deliver their services on the best of breed technology in the world. And finally, how do you think blockchain is going to impact the financial sector, and how do you see the situation developing in the next 10 years? Let's suppose that in the future, an official surveilled cryptocurrencies could be issued by central banks. In this scenario, although it is unlikely to be, things will change a lot. Let's say the entire landscape of payments will dramatically change. Is technology now, these days, up to it? Uh, ready to eat? Is it mature for this challenge? Not yet. But this is the role of uh, uh, SIA that can support banks during the experience phase uh, in order to test, uh, to follow the maturity of technology and to be ready if this would be the case. This was back in 2018. So let's go keep going down. Now he's got this chart from SIA um, and the network of excellence, R3 is on the diagram, IBM Hyperledger. Now remember, IBM, when you see IBM, that's stellar as well. Like I keep telling you, they're going to be in the game. Ripple, right here. I believe that that it, back in 2016 to 2018, they still were trying to figure out how this field was going to be laid out. But I think now, everybody's figured out how they're going to be in the game. And that includes a lot of different players. You know, the Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Ripple, R3, IBM, Stellar, all these different players in this game, they're all going to be at the table. Then he's got all kinds of information in his thing here. India's Federal Bank. And, you know, I'm showing you all this because at some point, anybody with an, with an ounce of common sense and a gut feeling on things, at some point, you see enough of these things and you just say, okay, enough's enough. I've seen it. I get it now. And the digital asset investor now gets it. India's federal bank to use Ripple for cross-border remittances. And as we as we go down here, Kuwait Central Bank to use Ripple for remittances. And then we get down here, National Commercial Bank of Saudi Arabia joins RippleNet. That's September 2018. Egypt's largest bank signs deal with Ripple. Um, that's, uh, which bank was that? Anyway, HDFC, one of the largest private banks in India, is now a Ripple customer. 
I'm going to try my best to find um, anywhere he's got, where he's got his little finger pointing. He, he, he tries to highlight things in here. National Bank of Pujara and Ripple to facilitate cross-border payments. Um, and then as we go along here, Qatar National Bank. Uh, is Qatari Commercial Bank headquartered in, in Doha, Qatar. Um, it was found, da 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 da. Qatar National Bank, and then we go down here, Ripple, um, there's MoneyGram, mention of MoneyGram, and it's got RBS Trials Ripple as a part of a 3.5 billion pound tech revamp. Royal Bank of Scotland, remember yesterday in my video when I showed you, he's got a uh, finger pointing to RBC as one of Ripple's partners. Remember, I showed you that tech guy that left Royal Bank of Scotland, then, that, then him and his team went and won, won a uh, hackathon with Ripple uh, in 2016. Uh, Reserve Bank of Australia um, shows that Bitcoin is inefficient and mentions Ripple as an alternative. Um, Bank of England, FinTech Accelerator, proof of concept, exploring the synchronized settlement of payments using the Interledger protocol. And then as we keep going down, the European Central Bank, synchronized cross-border payments, and then exper uh, experiments with DLT ledgers, experiment with without ILP, experiment with ILP. Ripples Ryan's a going to join the Federal Reserve's Faster Payments Task Force Steering Committee. Um, and then as we go down here, you'll see Ryan's a going, real-time cross, he's presented uh, for, to that. Potential Federal Reserve actions to support interbank settlement of faster payments. As we keep going along, then you'll see the Fed strategy for improving the U.S. payment system. And it's got Ripple on the slide, faster payment score scorecard. And then you've got Chris Larson, the CEO and co-founder of Ripple Lab. IMF expands FinTech, FinTech Group to foster greater collaboration between national authorities and international organizations. And then you've got all these guys on here. When you get down to here, Chris Larson is on the advisory board, executive chairman, Ripple. World Bank praises Ripple and X, and X Rapid. World Bank believes that DLT solutions could also bring down compliance costs and improve the transparency and traceability of transfers. They also praise Ripple's X Rapid, which uses XRP, used XRP. That's not the product anymore. Praised um, Ripple's X Rapid, calling it a real world solution that's being actively tested. Um, and then they've got that quote. Uh, let's see. In 2018, Ripple FinTech Company piloted X Rapid, X Rapid a DLT-based cross-border payment solution along with very competitive U.S.-Mexico corridor financial institutions involved, da-da-da-da-da. All right. Then you got this letter to the, um, I believe it's to the World Bank. Let's see. Yeah, there's a World Bank um, email address there. So that's a letter from Ripple to the, to the World Bank. Then we've got this little clip Government, that you have to uh, like. Relations uh, team, and we are engaging um, with 50 different governments worldwide, and um, it's a very exciting time. Um, so engaging with 50 governments worldwide. Now let's take you back to this. This is um this is the uh, thing where Ripple was doing the central bank summit back in 2017. And this is an article that was written by the IMF coming out of that summit. I believe they wrote it, um, that they actually may have written this presentation for the summit, this Dong Hay, Deputy Director of Monetary and Capital Markets. And I think they went over that for the summit. And then Brad Garlinghouse, this is uh, Brad Garlinghouse saying, proud to have led the Central Bank Summit where Ripple gathered central banks from around the world to discuss the next generation of payments. Together, we'll drive the internet of value. And then there was, there's this clip that you have to love of Christine Lagarde. Trace two, demand for cash is decreasing as is shown in our IMF work. And in 10, 20, 30 years time, who will still be exchanging those pieces of paper called checks? Bank deposit, too, is feeling the pressure from new forms of money. Think of the new specialized payment providers that offer e-money. From Alipay to WeChat in China, to Paytm in India, to M-Pesa in Kenya. These forms of money are designed with the digital economy in mind. They respond to what people demand and what the economy requires. 
Even cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, Ethereum and Ripple are vying for a spot in the cashless world, constantly reinventing themselves in the hope of offering more stable value and quicker and cheaper settlement. I'm going to stop there. You don't need to see any more of that. You get the picture there. Now, so if you're asking yourself, what is all this talk about this preventing World War III? What is that, really? Well, to, 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 after against the backdrop of everything I just showed you and what Ripple's been working on, you, and you have to ask yourself the question. Somebody opened all these central bank doors, and it's pretty to me it's pretty obviously the IMF that is, was involved in opening these doors for Ripple to these central banks around the world. Well, you have to ask yourself, what is the, what is the IMF? How was the IMF created? Well, I've shown you this before. The IMF was created out of Bretton Woods, the Bretton Woods uh, Agreement 1944. Well, the Bretton Woods Agreement had everything to do with the prevention of future wars. That's what the whole point of it, that's the whole point of what it was about, okay? And you don't have to take my word for it. This is, this is out, right out of the Wikipedia page. The political basis for the Bretton Woods system was, was in the confluence of two key conditions, the shared experiences of two world wars, with the sense that failure to deal with economic problems after the first war had led to the second, and the concentration of power in a small, small number of states. Now, I'm going to cap off this point, and I'm going to read you. Now this, what I'm about to read to you, many of you may not even know who Hodor is. But Hodor is one of the probably four to five people that told us a lot of significant things about Ripple and XRP over the last three years that disappeared. Hodor's one of them. The Hodor blog was his blog. And this, this blog entry, and, and, and let me reiterate that point. It wasn't just Hodor. There's a, there's a few people who have said a lot of things that made me think that they knew something that have disappeared from this community, folks. And, and they've never been heard from again. Hodor is one of them. Okay. Now, August 11th, 2017 is when he wrote this in his blog entry. And I'm going to read you a portion of it here. The title of this section is No More Easy War Financing Through Printing Money. If citizens of any country are given a choice to hold any currency they desire, there is inevitably, as we have seen, a percentage of that population that will choose a cryptocurrency like XRP. When citizens can freely choose to not hold or use the fiat currency issued by a government, it limits that government's ability to use currency to finance its projects, and then in parentheses, or wars. Instead, when a government cannot rely on monetary policy for its financing, it must actually do the hard work of asking for, for, for more money from its citizens or taking out loans in a very public manner. No more quantitative easing to finance conflict or balance a budget. Interconne interconnections of a truly global economy. It takes days to move money across board some borders currently, and the banking system cannot blame laws or regulations. In fact, central banks and the IMF have been calling for faster payment solutions and instant cross-border value transfer for some time now. U.S. Federal Reserve and the IMF both want faster payments. In the United States, the Federal Reserve's Faster Payments Task Force recently concluded its study and in its second round selected Ripple and the XRP ledger as one of the finalists. The International Monetary Fund recently asked Chris Larson from Ripple to be a part of their high-level advisory group on fintech. No other fintech company with a digital asset was selected to participate except for Ripple. Both of these moves indicate a trend towards a much more connected global economy that Ripple can power behind the scenes with a four-second settlement time for payments across borders. Interledger Protocol. Ripple has also established the Interledger Protocol, an international standard for how payments should be communicated over the internet. The standard has now prompted many different ledger systems to add ILP plugins so that they can communicate directly with other ledgers, including the XRP ledger. In the future, when Ripple plumbing has connected so many nations and banks closely together, and when ILP has enabled a mesh of different bank ledgers and cryptocurrencies to communicate instantly, a nation's borders will, know, will be no obstruction for money. 
This means that the effects of war will impact all nations that do business with a country in conflict. The detrimental economic impacts will be felt in ways that previously were constrained within a nation's borders. That convenience for those that would wage war is fading with the increased economic interdependence that cryptocurrencies such as XRP and the Interledger Protocol can bring to the fold. Invest in XRP for peace? Question mark. Add XRP to your cryptocurrency por uh, po portfolio. You just might be doing something local that helps advance world peace. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button and tell your friends and family that XRP and the digital ledger and the interledger protocol may very well be what does end up preventing World War III. And that might be the whole purpose, the real purpose, the big, big purpose of what Ripple started for. Thank you for listening.